Healthcare. It's the invisible safety net that many of us take for granted, but not everybody has that luxury. A group whose struggles that have been long ignored is that of Native Americans, who face significant barriers to accessing healthcare and treatment. I spoke with Berkeley student Naya Marks to hear her perspective as a Native American and nurse Victoria Hicks, who gave some insight on the administrative side of things. So because I'm registered in a tribe and I'm affiliated with a federally recognized tribe, um, my health benefits are completely covered as a Native American. So it is there, but there are things that are misleading or in a weird way. They do have this Indian health clinic on the reservation that they can go to, but it provides very basic minimum like medical care and services. Data shows Native Americans have the highest rate of uninsured people while simultaneously having the lowest life expectancy rates. There's a lot of problems that can arise if someone's not covered by health insurance, but I think the biggest problem would be a delay in care. A person's much less likely to see a regular doctor on a regular basis. Native Americans are predisposed to higher rates of preventable diseases, making health care an even more critical resource to have. Unfortunately, the Native Americans do suffer a lot from diabetes, obesity, drug and alcohol abuse. Secondly, I feel like teen pregnancy isn't talked about enough and we see it so often. They almost steer clear of offering Native American teenagers birth control. That's not something that they want to talk about, give out. The distance and location from the nearest medical center can hinder a lot of people from ever going to the doctor or seeking emergency medical care. Lack of transportation a lot of Native Americans have can hinder them from getting to like a dialysis appointment, which is critical to not miss. If people miss dialysis appointments more than once or twice, they could quite literally die. Native Americans also experience a lower quality of care and rushed treatment due to underrepresentation in the medical community. Currently, only 0.3% of practicing doctors are indigenous. I've gone to various therapists, and within the first two weeks of each visit, I've been offered narcotics, antidepressants, anti-anxiety. They, that's what they go to first. As they started taking more and more of people from like other ethnicities and allowing them to come because they pay and that's where they get their money. And they basically stopped like giving first access to those who are enrolled in a tribe first. My doctor, he said that he has seen five to six patients that haven't seen a doctor in over 10 years. Tribal enrollment is required to be eligible for Indian health services. However, certain tribal rules limit membership status, which prevents people from receiving health care. There are tribes that are starting to tell people who's indigenous and who's not by blood quantum. They take you, they test you, right, your blood, they see how much Native American you have in you in your blood lineage. And if you're not over, I think it's like 65%, you're kicked out of the tribe and you don't have access to any of it. What if my kids don't get access to healthcare because of that? In the midst of these governmental and tribal obstacles, there are still ways patients can prioritize their health. There's a lack of education and awareness. Seeking nutritious foods and getting adequate exercise and fresh air, those are all things that we can educate the patients on. Ultimately important to teach them the importance and the power that they have in their own role of their health care. In June 2024, the Supreme Court ruled that the IHS must pay support costs in helping tribes administer their health care programs. While this is a step that opens up funding for other initiatives, there are still ways to go in ensuring equitable health care access for all Native Americans. For Cal TV News, I'm Amy Shepard.